We are currently inside of a little character studio setup I have. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, we have a post-process volume, a little backdrop, and also a skylight, uh, which is just offering just a little bit of light to it. But what makes this unique is that we have this little anchor point right here called character rig. Uh, this one uh, is just basically what we're going to use in order to be able to create a small three-point lighting system uh, for our character that we can then uh, use inside of our sequence and inside of our uh, larger cinematics once it's made. So uh, let's go about making this. It's very simple. However, it really goes a long way. So I'm just going to delete it. Um, and we're going to start fresh. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring in a empty actor. Um, if we go down to the basics tab here inside of our place actors panel, uh, we can grab it from the very top. So let's go do that. And I'm going to set that into the zero point. Um, so now that it's here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename it and let's just call it rig character. I'm naming it rig character, but ideally what you would do is that you would name it specifically for the character that it's meant for. You could very well have multiple light rigs for your characters, but in this case, I am only using the one for a very generic one. So I'm just naming it rig character. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just duplicate it three times. I'm also going to make sure that I have snapping off so it doesn't add a little bit of an offset. And if you did have it on, right, and you duplicated it, it would just kind of offset it by the incrementation here. So you just need to hit the zero out key or the revert back to original button here. But we had it off, so it's all going to stay in the same place. But for each one, we're going to give it a name. And the name will be identifying what pivot it is for the type of light. Now, because we're making a three-point light system, there's only three lights, three pivots we're going to make. And those are the key light, fill light, and rim light. Now, if you're not familiar with this, don't worry. In a later video, we're going to be going over a lot more of these things. But in short, a key light is essentially your most dominant light in your scene, right? Or the most dominant one on your character. And this is also going to be the one that's going to be casting the most prominent shadows and have the most prominent light source inside of the scene. So uh, with that, we have a fill light. Now what a fill light's for is essentially for filling your shadows, right? And it's there to control the contrast in your scene. Right? or at least on your character in this instance. But uh, it's very useful, but there is a way of placing it that uh, we'll be covering in a later video. But for now, we're just going to cover that basic. Next, the third one we're going to have here is called a rim light. And a rim light is used specifically for sort of creating a difference from your character in the background, as well as defining a shape around them or defining the shape of the character. It can be very, very nice and appealing result. But what we're going to do based off of that is we're going to take these three and we're going to name them pivot underscore light type. So in other words, we're going to have a pivot underscore uh, key light. <clears throat> and let's just take that name and we're just going to duplicate it to the others. So we're going to do uh, key light. Now we're going to do rim light. <coughs> and we're going to do fill light. Now uh, we're going to take all three of these now that they're named and we're going to just throw them under the rig. Now under these now we need to add some lights. Now, the best ones to use here, obviously it will depend on your own style, but what's typically used is either a spotlight or a rec light. Either one's fine. For me, at least for this demo, I'm going to be using a rec light just because, all right? Um, I do change them up a bit depending on the type of lighting scenario I'm going for, but since we're making something generic, I'll just use uh, one of them. So uh, I'm gonna take that rec light and I'm gonna bring it in and I'm going to zero it out 
And in the case of zeroing it out, if you can't do that because your pivot's not at the, the zero point or your anchor's not at the zero point, all you have to do is put your rec light or whatever light you're using inside of the rig and zero it out that way. So that way it's all at the very center and that's gonna be our starting position for this setup. So I'm just gonna duplicate the light two more times and I'm gonna give it a name. Now I like the prefix them. I know it may seem a little redundant, but I like to start it with LGT for lighting, then followed by indicator of what type of light it is and then what its purpose is. So in our case, I'm gonna be putting LGT rack for rack light. And then this one will be our key light. I'm just gonna copy that name and I'm gonna just basically name our other ones following a similar fashion. So let's name this last one, Rim. Now all we need to do is just take the light and put it under our corresponding pivot. There we go. Now that it's here, we'll just actually do one more thing to these pivots which is we wanna raise them up to generally either chest height or eye level. This is a good indication because typically this is where we're gonna be focusing on on a character. So it's good to kind of raise your lights up here and this will be our starting point for rotations and any other thing. So now that we've done this, let's get our default light position in. So I'm gonna take each of these lights Right, I'm going to select them and I was able to select each one by just holding control and clicking on them. And this allows me to select individual items, not in a list and still hold several at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them to negative 200. So that way uh, they're still facing inward and also they are going to be uh, pushed back a certain distance. Now this is a little important um, due to this thing called the inverse square law uh, where the distance from a subject actually will determine a how harsh your shadows are as well as the intensity of the light on your subject. So that for now that's a basic explanation why I'm moving it further back but it's not really going to matter too much right now right because we're just doing a demo. So uh, now that I've done this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grab the pivot and with everything zeroed out, I'm going to go in the global mode. And part of this is just preference. I like to do any pan rotations inside a global and then any pitch um, rotation, which is just basically tilting up and down. Uh, I like to do that in local mode. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to control. So. What I'm going to do with the pivot for the key light is I'm just going to rotate it until the light is roughly at maybe a 45 degree angle. So say if we just turn on snapping for a second and then we uh, just made this 180 degrees and just blasted him right in the face. Well, what I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to rotate it uh, about 45 degrees to the side. And now this is a very generic placement, right? And it's very popular just because uh, it gives us like this thing called Rembrandt lighting, um, which gives us a little bit of a triangle on the cheek, but we're not done. Um, we're, you know, obviously at 45 degrees, but typically what we do here is we then rotate it up, you know, slightly, right? Uh, in this case, I have a 35 degree angle and it's giving us a nice, fall off here. Now, the thing about this is that what we just did is why I like working this way. It's because I no longer have to adjust the light itself or put it into position. I just need to rotate it, right? Any type of way I need. And if it's too close, I just simply have to back it up on uh, in local mode. So now I just have to go like this as opposed to having to um, actually manually place it, which makes things so much easier. But since it's like this, uh, we're nearly in a spot where we're good uh, to kind of go over the next little bit. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place the fill light and rim light in their general areas. And uh, 
uh, typically how this is, is that you want to put the fill light about opposite of your, of your other light. Now, that is because you don't want it to obviously cast contradictory, like counter shadowing, pretty much, where it will take, uh, say, the side of the nose and then put another shadow on the side that the lighting's coming from. It's not really a pleasing way of doing it. So um, the other reason uh, is, of course, we want to also place it at eye height, right? Is because it's not going to give us those weird downward shadows or up shadows or anything like that. This is more specific to the fill light. So um, now that it's here, we're also just going to place our rim light, which will be sort of at an angle in the back behind them and you can sort of see what it's doing right here uh, now I'm going to put it roughly maybe 45 degrees but uh, we'll just call this a good spot to start with now let's go about like sort of setting our initial values for this um, typically I like to use the light mixer uh, because it just makes things a lot easier I can see all my lights all at once I can even mute them one at a time and that is something that is very helpful for us to do. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open that light mixer and it's very easy to find. It's just under Windows. And if we scroll down under the L's is that we see the light mixer. So let's open that up. Now you can see here, we're only seeing the lights currently inside of our level. Right now, um, I have just the three. And of course, I believe there are some filters, but we're not gonna worry about that. For now, we're just going to take a look at these. So typically what we want to do first is adjust our key light because that's the one that's going to be causing the most shadows and of course the lighting of our subject. So the nice thing about the light mixer is that you'll notice that there's this little headphones right here, which means we can solo it. So if I just click on it, it will turn off all the other lights in, that are affecting the scene and it will just turn this one on. Now on this one, right, this is our fill. Let's actually go to the right one as opposed to using uh, the wrong one. So you can see here, we're just seeing our, our key light. And now from here, I want to actually go ahead and say uh, make some adjustments. Now, as I said, when a light is close to our subject, it's going to cast uh, much more intensity as well as much more intense shadows. You can kind of see it here, is that it's causing a little bit of harshness here. But if we back it up, we can start getting a much nicer fall off. Now this also means that the light isn't going to be as intense, which is perfectly understandable. So for a little bit of a nutshell here, if it's going to be one meter away, that's going to basically be on 100% intensity. And then as we move it further away, we get into the inverse square law, which is basically think about the distance, right? So say you're two meters away, you square it. So two times two is four. That means that you're basically one fourth of the intensity. So in other words, if our light is currently at four intensity, if I set it to negative 200, now we're sitting at about one, right? And if I double that to negative 400 here, we're now sitting at one sixteenth of the light, right? Because four times four is 16. So I'm just gonna keep it roughly at this distance actually. I really kind of like the, um, I guess it's four meters. Let's just set it back to two. Uh, but I did like the intensity, so I'm just gonna cut it in half. So uh, actually, maybe just for this, we'll keep it up. Now from here, I want to set my fill light. So I'm going to just go into here, uh, turning this one on, and I'm going to set this one to a division of the, the key light. Now this is a key to fill ratio, right? We'll get into that in another video, but for now, uh, since we have uh, this at four, right at a distance of 200. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to set this one uh, to one. So it's at one fourth of the intensity. 
right? And you can see here what it's doing is it's basically just at giving a little bit of fill, right? We're not trying to uh, blast the light. We're trying to just have a little bit of lighting on there to fill it up. Now, if I take away like the, the skylight and I just kind of have this one roughly there, you can see that it is casting some shadows, but it's not like really noticeable. And then when we turn on our um, turn on our key and our fill, you can see here that it actually has um, a nice way of filling those shadows. And if I turn this off, you see how much this is actually doing uh, to the actual shadows. Now let's take a look at our rim light. So let's bring this in, and you can see here that what it's doing is it's just adding uh, a nice definition to our character. Now uh, with this, we'll just be able to have it at an angle uh, behind the character. And this is pretty good. Uh, we can raise it up if we want, um, in which case we can, like you can see, kind of do quite a bit with it. Um, I liked where it was, but I kind of like a little bit more of an angle because I like how it's coming off of his pec. So uh, we can have it like this. Now you can see here that we now have all three of our lights placed. But let's um, let's see why we did all that, right? Well, let's open up a new sequence. And underneath this, uh, let's go ahead and let's first add our character. And we can now add all of our like pivots and stuff as well. So we're just going to go add selected. And now I'm just going to throw this all into a folder. And now the cool thing about this, okay, is that we have a character here and we can do some of the other uses for um, the sequencer where we can actually use like, say something like an attach track where we can then attach this uh, character rig to the character, right? Now, typically, like, say if your character has a root bone or something like that, that makes this perfect, right? Is that you would zero this out on the character. And the reason why this is great is because now, look at this. We can then move our character around. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's actually move the character all the way over here to our edge. And now you can see here that the light is not only moving, but we now also have access to these other pivots right here. So let's go ahead and let's just add a transform. And now what we're going to do is, oh, let's actually do it to our rig here, is that we can do a little bit of a global rig move. So in this case, we'll just key it and then maybe we'll rotate it 180 on the yaw. And now you can see here what it's doing, right? But also the cool thing is, is that uh, if our character moves, say rotates, so do the lights. So we can actually fully place it. And if the character is going to be going right here, we'll just offset it inside of our actual, you know, transform for the rig. But now we have a fully animating character rig. Uh, and this is exactly what we want to do. Now, obviously, this video was more specific to setting up the rig. Um, we are going to be talking more in future videos on how to light, how to actually use this and get more artistic shots. Um, but that's more to come. Anyways, it's great to be back. I hope this video was helpful. Have a great day.